Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 energizing perfumes. And I'm talking those perfumes that give you that boost of energy, that gives you that, that give you that vibe, that zhuzh, that little pick-me-up moment that you might need. And it was really interesting while compiling this list and thinking about it, the conclusions that I came to and also the reasons why certain decisions were made, I was kind of shocked. So, Energizer perfumes, um, here we come. First, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already here on the tubes. Uh, you can also follow me and join me on Patreon, Super Decable, spelled together for extra perks and extra content that you do not get to see here. Thank you to my patrons already pledged. So, you can also push the notification bell to be notified every time I post a new video. Let's get straight to it. The background is less, is this kind of idyllic future, I, I want to say, landscape with these energy machines that are collecting energy and giving it into the sky. I'm envisioning these to be energy poles that are spraying into the sky. They're spraying perfumes into the air. That's my vision for this. And perfumes are filling all of the lakes and the mountains and the sky is smelling of, oh, what is the sky smelling of? Well, the first perfume, the sky is smelling of Giorgio Beverly Hills. Now, interesting. It's actually the color of the sky is the color of Georgia Beverly Hills. Gosh, I love this perfume so much. Now, this is a white floral. And to me, it is highly energizing, highly energizing. It's sunshine in a bottle. Like you smell this thing and you get energy. Smelling this perfume to me, it's as if I'm laying on the beach, tanking in the sun, which I don't recommend anybody to do nowadays because the rays of light can harm. But just conceptually, it's almost like laying on the beach, tanking in the sun, enjoying the heat and the good weather, and just having that energy, just feeling, feeling great, especially good the next day, because when, you, when you've had a good day in the sun, a healthy day in the sun, always use, you know, sun protectant and all that good stuff, be in the shade a little, feel the sun from the sides, but then the next day you're usually your whole endorphin levels are much higher, the dopamine levels are higher, your brain has received the vitamin D it needs and all that good stuff. Hmm, little gardenia beauty, little gardenia tuberose musky beauty. Very, very energizing. Now, the interesting uh, vibe I got from this list that I compiled is that, well, you know, we always say perfumes know no gender. Uh, on my channel, at least we do. And I that's what I believe and I stand by fully. But when it comes to energizing perfumes, for whatever reason we're going to see, they might be energizing two and four throughout this video. Most of them actually come from the targeted to men section. Maybe because they have that lemony accord, they're more, they're composed in a way to feel more horny, testosterone-y in a way, like they give that kick there's a, a sort of a boost and i can tell you the biggest example of that and i find it highly energizing would be our second perfume on the list and that would be sauvage by dior and kev says in the chats so i'm filming this in front of a live virtual audience join me i live stream several times a week on my main super Jacob youtube channel where i also record these uh videos but um Kev just in the chat said, men need more to get it up. The energy. Yes, definitely. Um, so, Sauvage, the eau de toilette, the beginning of it all. I, I have all of the concentrations of Sauvage, but the eau de toilette, love it or hate it. And I know this is a perfume that a lot of the fragrance community, the niche fragrance community in particular, loves to snob this one, like the plague. I have a lot of respect for Sauvage, even though I have my problems with it. I've reviewed all of the concentrations of it. And I do, in my Eau de Toilette review of Sauvage that I've shot many years ago, around 2015, 16, or 17, I can't remember when it was. But I do state that this is that douchebag that we all love to hate and hate to love. 
this is the walk of shame the morning after when you're like smelling of the lover you you were with and you're like i don't want to go back to him again oof that was not the best i mean the, you know it was good in bed and all but uh personality wise oh hell no 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 i'm done with single digit iq people you know dumb does do something well but and then you end up kind of craving them again four months later. And again, you end up with the walk of shame smelling of them the next morning. So it's it's an energy boost for sure in its own special way. Audrey says Johnny Depp has a new advert for it. Live in Ferret. So Sauvage de Toilette. It has that ambroxan in it. It has that fake ambergris. It has that lavendery sweet accord, licorice -y, some, like a cherry pop. There's no cherry in there. Just to be very clear. But it, it has a fruity accord that is amped by citrusy, woodsy, artificial woods and ambroxan to the point of nausea. But it titillates. It's vibrating. It's energetic. It's energetic. It energizes. It definitely energizes me whenever I smell it. Sometimes for the best, sometimes for the worst. But that's kind of the example I'm showing you. These are the perfumes that have that energy. We have some rare examples of the contrary, like Giorgio Beverly Hills. But, for example, the next one, classic, from the 90s in this case, and I do have the original 90s formula still, let me tell you, this thing is highly energizing. It is Eternity for Men. You see, it's for men. Eternity for Men by Calvin Klein. And uh, again, gorgeous citrusy accord. There's depth to this thing. It's the burst of citrus and there's an aldehydic vibe. Spicy, peppery, zesty, bergamotty, citrusy, and that's usually what in the opening notes bursts. And when it bursts and sparkles, it energizes you. It gives you that, it wakes you up, in other words. It gives you almost like a little kick, a little punch every time you smell them. That's what I deem to be an energizing perfume. And I think, at least when it comes to the vintage formula of Eternity for Men, highly energized, energizable or energizing perfume to smell. There you go. t -Pal just said in the chats, hubby still wears that on those nights when dot 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 you can fill in the blanks. Energizing perfume. Eternity for men. By the way, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged. Okay? Just my opinion. The fourth one. Fascinating choice for the fourth one because... Here's an example of a perfume that not only energizes because of how it smells, but it also energizes because of how it feels on the skin. Very, very fascinating. I had to, this was in fact, actually when I was starting to compile and work on this list, this was the first one to have made it on the list. This was like the first one I was immediately like, okay, this one has to be on the list. This is the first one I'm going to put on the list, and then we're going to compile the list after, after this one is set in stone. So this is really important. Believe it or not, it's Eau de, uh, de, Eau de Cartier, okay? Uh, the Cartier water, Eau de Cartier, in the flanker version, see, it says Eau de Cartier, in the Vetiver Blue version okay so it is vetiver blue the blue vetiver eau de cartier in eau de toilette concentration it has this gorgeous design bottle with a drop of water in it so that when you flip it like this well, maybe on front of the camera you can't really see very well but it does oh, there you go it has like waves of water forming at the bottom of the bottle it's really really cute uh, to look at and to see. Oh, there you go. It has like a little nipple <laughs> going on up there. But now, the way that this bottle works is kind of cuckoo because you have to slide this down to unlock the sprayer. And then you slide it up to lock the sprayer. Uh, this thing came in the box with it just to kind of prevent it from... But it 
it falls off. This is not meant to be worn there. I just kept it there because I never throw away anything. So anyway, it's the on and off principle. But like I said, so why does this one also feel energizing and not just smell energizing? Well, because it is a blue vetiver, which has... And look, half a bottle is empty already. Like, I use this a lot. It has mint in it. And the mint almost has a camphorous quality. So this perfume is meant to cool the skin. So when you spray it on, you do smell the vetiver, you do smell the mint. But you start feeling a cooling effect on the skin. It's almost like you put tiger balm on your skin, like you put uh, a light, you get a light tingly sensation, like a camphorous sensation on the skin. So this thing energizes because it smells fresh and minty and vetivery, but it also energizes because it kind of boosts the skin up a little bit. So it's definitely, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a very interesting example of a fragrance that not only smells energizing, but also feels on the skin like it's energizing. Now, of course, not everybody's going to like that prickly sensation on their skin. Uh, I find it very interesting. I mean, is it a perfume I crave a lot? No. And I do believe this one has been discontinued even. Um, but there you go. Now, I'm not so sure who the perfumer is because... Ollie's asking, who's the perfumer of this one cool bottle? Uh, can somebody in the chats, while I continue talking, figure this one out and I'll get back to it in a bit. If anybody can Google Vetiver Bleu Eau de Cartier perfume, who is the perfumer behind it? Let me guys know and then I'll let you guys know as soon as someone in the chats write it. But you understand why this is really an interesting example of an energizing perfume? It has several levels of why it's energizing. Very fascinating. So that was my number four. Number five. Well, let's do a Chanel since it's Chanel number five. It's not Chanel number five, though. But coincidentally, I found it very difficult. You know how much I love my Chanel perfumes. But I found it very difficult. Not many Chanel perfumes are energizing. Mm -mm. They have a different quality to them. And top 10 energizing perfumes, you know, usually with every top 10, like I could make almost all 10 of them be Chanel because I love Chanel so much. But with energizing and Chanel, no, Chanel works differently. Sure, they give you vibes, they give you emotions, they give you energy, but energizing, only one really does the job fully. And that would be... Pour Monsieur by Chanel. And again, we got a male catered to men. Fragrance, bergamot and aldehydes, Sicilian bergamot and aldehydes in the opening. And then we get ginger. And ginger is also highly invigorating and energizing as an ingredient in perfumes or as a note in perfumery. So we got the ginger. We got a hint of labdanum. We got lavender. Well, no, lavender, no, not in this one. We got lavender in the Eau de Parfum. This is the Eau de Toilette. And uh, we got spices, we got woods, but it's that bergamot, aldehyde opening mixed in with oak moss and ginger with a hint of labdanum. It just takes the cake for me. This is highly... Hmm. Oh my God, eternity smells so good. But on this side, here we got eternity. We're going to spray Pomosio on the other side. Yeah, immediate wake-up call. Oh, it's it's the most gorgeous Sicilian bergamot. I mean, this thing is uh, a masterpiece. Henri Robert is the perfumer of uh, Pour Monsieur. This one came out in 1955. Coincidentally, the same year that the 255 bag was released, coincidentally, the same year that Disneyland opened in California, also in 1955. So there's a lot that happened in this year. This was a very, very magical year, literally. Um, Finley says, maybe the perfumer of the Cartier perfume was Mathilde Laurent or Ma Mathilde Laurent. I don't know. I'll take your word for it, Finley. And if anybody knows in the comment section later on when you're watching this video, let us know. But like I said, a gorgeous, gorgeous, divine, invigorating, energizing Shepra, the most energizing perfume by Chanel. You know, I was contemplating putting another Chanel, 
there were other two Chanel's that were bonus round, ding, 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 bonus round. They didn't make that final cut. But if I were to have to pick out another two Chanel's that were energizing, I would definitely say first position, this one, pour Monsieur Eau de Toilette. Second position would be, for me, Boy, uh, de Chanel. Um, it, it, is, it has an, an energizing, boosting effect. Um, Boy has that for me. It has that vibe about it. And then it would be Platinum Egoist. Again, lavender. And again, catered to men. Platinum Egoist original formulation. That would be an energizer, like a booster, energy boosting uh, perfume as well. But they didn't make the final cut because this one is more energizing to me than they are. But they came in really close, you know what I mean? So that's the number five. The number six, another lavender, another wonderful energy booster. And this is an example of an energy boosting perfume that both smells like it energizes you, it wakes you up, it gives you a kick of energy, but it also is reminiscent of a certain time. It has memory that also brings back energy of youthful days, of gorgeous events, great cinema, great music, great fashion. It takes us back to the 90s in the best of ways, honey. Hands down, Le Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier, the Eau de Toilette formula. Now, I know that a lot of people think that this one, you know, oh my God, all the perfume snobs out there. Oh my God, all the wrong people wear this. Thank you. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care who wears it, who doesn't wear it. I respect this one a lot. It was Francis Kurjan's first perfume, Lavender Masterpiece. He was only 25 years old-ish when he made it. It was Gautier's second perfume after his Jean-Paul Gautier perfume, which was later renamed Classique. I still adore to this day the Eau de Toilette, the first iteration of this one. I don't like the other concentrations, hands, uh, or slash or flankers, but... It's a beautiful, vanillic, invigorating, energizing, lavender, fougere, modern perfume that has a bad reputation because of, of the masses that wear it and the type of people that sometimes wear it. But I, I, I still respect this perfume so, so, so much. I love it two bits. Let's layer it on to... Eternity for Men, which is also from the 90s. I don't going to be a doozy. Oh, I, I love it. I just, yeah, I love my Le Mal. Um, and my favorite bottle shape is the 75 mil because that was the first one that was released. This is a 75 mil. The proportions are best. <laughs> the best on this, uh, oh, on this size. Cover yourself up, girl. Um... It is very invigorating, very fun, energizing to, the, to in the best of ways. And it also brings back memories of great time. The 90s had the best fashion, energizing fashion, hopeful fashion, youthful fashion, fun fashion, and great movies. Jean-Paul Gaultier did all of the costumes for The Fifth Element from Luc Besson with uh, Bruce Willis. And... That movie, I adore. It's one of my favorite science fiction movies. Anybody remembers Diva Plava Laguna singing that song, The Blue Alien, which like nobody can really imitate how amazing she was. Well, some people can that do opera, but I, env I envision everybody in that movie smelling, almost everybody smelling of Le Mal and Classique. I, I love it a bit. So anyway, it's it, that movie makes me feel energetic as well. So this is really, really energizing. And if you're ashamed to wear it in public because too many people know what it is and you don't want to be that person, then wear it at home. Wear it in the privacy of your own home and enjoy it. And feel free to enjoy it because this one really, really is worth it. It's it's really, really worth it. And it's one of those perfumes that you can often find reduced in price. And, oh man, it's so beautiful. So energizing. It's a gorgeous, powdery, vanillic lavender. It just boosts your energy the second you smell it. Speaking of energy... <laughs> I also have an energy drink here. Hashtag not sponsored. You can imagine what it is. It's not a beer, by the way. I'm not drinking any alcohol, and I don't recommend anybody to drink alcohol. The only alcohol I do is in my perfumes, and I spray it on my skin. Thank you very much. But mm. energy drink. Whoa. <laughs> and now we're moving on to the next one. Also from the 90s. 
This one is incredible. Um, it makes me feel some type of way. When I smell this perfume, I, I am like young again, like energy to a point of like, okay. We'll go, we'll go. Uh, in the best of ways, in the best of ways. And uh, that would be Dolce Gabbana Spurom. And again, one that's catered to men, you see. Very interesting. So here we got, again, bergamot, tangerine, orange, lemon, lavender, clary sage, tarragon, cardamom, black pepper, sandalwood, cedarwood, tonka beans, musks. It's a fougere. Green, fruity, fresh. They say it's a, it's a tester. I still have all the things on the back written. Oh. You smell it and you go, ping! <laughs> so we, we're having a theme here, as you can see. It's a lot of lavender, a lot of citruses, aldehydes, invigorating smells, fruity notes, peppery, spiced up, amped up notes. But the spices are not the kind of holiday season spices, but they're rather spicy, peppery, spicy, kind of... Pinches you a little bit, wakes you up, you know, slaps you in the fa in the face, in the face. Very much share, uh, very much share from um, Moonstruck. Snap out of it! That's what this perfume does a little bit to me, and it's still the one with the sticker from Euro Italia. <sighs> Can I just? <sighs> oh my God! I can't even tell you. I'm overdosing here because I. Mmm, Le Mal here, Dolce Gabbana there. Pour Monsieur here, I'm in he energy heaven. The energy drink on the side. We'll go, we'll go. Now the next one, I think we're all going to agree definitely on the next one. Because the next one is a coffee bomb. Highly energizing. Also patchouli bomb. But it has that... The whole freaking perfume, the way it's named, to the way it's composed, to its marketing strategy, everything about this perfume is energy. Oh, speaking of marketing, let's rewind quickly to Le Mal. You remember how they advertised Le Mal back in the 90s? High energy. Two sailor men. Very muscly. Trying to kind of, you know, they're kind of holding hats to see who's going to win. It's like the same model twice. It's like him and his own twin battling it out, arm wrestling, who's going to be stronger and the muscles glistening. It's like an energy bomb, the advertisement campaign of Le Mal. So even the advertisement campaign was telling us energy. But the next one, patchouli coffee accord, gorgeous chocolatey vibes, and yet also citrusy and fresh, while at the same time deep hyper energy and when it's so high energy that we all say amen and it had to be amen thierry mugler uh thierry mugler is with that purple liquid inside i'm telling you this is like what superheroes wear this and this is why i'm seeing the ad campaign it's always a vision of a superhero hyper energy battling everybody, winning over any bad, and that coffee accord. And there's there's been many flankers of Amen, and there is a specific flanker of Amen that comes in kind of like a brownish uh, container at, with an amped up coffee accord, like, whoa, on another level. But that was a limited edition, no longer in production, but uh, it doesn't matter. The standard Eau de Toilette Amen I have it here in the caoutchouc uh, bottle, in the rubbery bottle still. Uh, this one, I still have the OG one with the old school Mugler logo before L'Oreal took them over. So this is precious juice here. Oh, what a beauty. Another 90s beauty. And again, catered to men, you see. But again, it has that citrusy opening, but then it goes deep into that coffee. Coffee, as we all know, highly energizing. Wakes you up, peps you up. Gives you a boost into the day. Similar with this one, except here's the twist. This one is magical at night. You go clubbing with this. Amazing. You're going to be dancing all night. Yeah, you might need other chemical helps <laughs> along the way throughout the night while you're dancing and sweating. But I would not recommend it. 
Instead, I would just say, enjoy this. Now, Great Party Perfume also has a relatively kind of iffy reputation nowadays, similar to Le Mal. These two have kind of landed in the wrong crowd sometimes, a little bit cliche, a little bit sketchy, a little bit nefarious individuals love to wear these perfumes as well. Not just the not just the cool bad boys from Hollywood movies type of guys, but really bad, bad people. But anyway, uh, we'll go, we'll go. Uh, I still respect these very much and they're highly energizing to me. Maybe just for the privacy of my own home, but we'll go, we'll go. So there you go. Thanks, Jesus. Yes, it was Amen Pure Coffee was the coffee flanker of Amen, which was like insanely chocolatey coffee. You know what I mean? This one doesn't have that hyper chocolatey aspect to it as well, like uh, Amen Pure Coffee did. <sighs> Delicious. Now, <clears throat> the next one is a new release. I think it's uh, from last year. It is from last year, 2022 release from Hermes. And it is highly invigorating. And again, we got those. This one is unisex, catered to both men and women. What makes this one highly energetic is a minty accord of basil, of the purple basil in particular. And yes, this is a green bottle and I'm using a green screen. So you do not really see that it is... <laughs> Eau du Basilic Pourpre. Okay, there you go. You see at least the name of the perfume, even though the bottle is transparent. It's Eau du Basilic Pourpre. As you can see, the glass is green, so it's invisible. What a gorgeous energy perfume this is. This just makes you feel good, perky, wakes you up and but in a very beautiful elegant way it doesn't punch you like these other perfumes that have the peppery spicy notes this one knows how to energize you delicately like though you know those clocks that you can buy order off of you know online usually stores all sell them these clocks that wake you up slowly like lamps alarm lamps that slowly start illuminating stronger and stronger to give you the illusion that you're waking up to natural sunlight as the sun lifts up. So there's these lamps that you could buy, right, that they kind of slowly become stronger, more intense to give you a delicate, soft, non-aggressive wake up into the day. Not just that alarm clock that, you know, 7.30 a.m. begins with eh, 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 eh. No, none of that. Instead, it's a it's a delicate wake-up call. Delicate energy. Im delicately energy imbued and imbuing process. That's exactly what Eau du Basilic Pourpre does. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And it really, 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 really hits the spot for me. Every time I smell it, it just feels like, okay, great. Even though I'm tired sometimes, I take this one with me on the road because I know it's going to have a delicate, gentle, energizing effect. It's not going to be too aggressive for anybody around me. So I would just like kind of spritz a little bit on, you know what, I might just do it right now. It picks you up immediately. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful companion throughout the day to give you a little pick-me-upper. Eau du Basilic Pourpre by Hermès in the Eau de Cologne concentration. Uh, I'm not so sure if they're going to also release the Eau de Toilette of this, but for now they have the Eau de Cologne. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And number ten, last but never least, this one is energizing for two reasons. One, because it smells, again, spicy, peppery, but also warm, also catered to men. Here's another one of those examples. But also because it is discontinued and rare. And because it is discontinued and rare, 
This is another element of energizing perfumes that I wanted to touch base on in this video. And that would be that phenomenon of us knowing that a perfume that we own no longer exists. It's about us knowing that this perfume, if we were to want to repurchase on the pre-loved market another bottle of it, it would cost us like 50 times more than this perfume used to cost when it was in production. So what I'm saying by this is when you have a perfume like that, that you love, and you decide to spray it on, it gives you a vibe. It, it, it gives you an endorphin kick. Just the notion alone that you're spraying something forbidden in a way. Why forbidden? Because, you know, with every spray you spray, you have less of it left. You know it doesn't exist anymore. It's no longer in production. So you're making... It's... Uh, yeah, like you feel kind of guilty that you're spraying it, that you're using it up, but at the same time, you feel like you did something forbidden and it's exciting. It's also very exciting to spray it. So that energizes you. That alone gives you a little horny kick. Plus the smell of this one is amazing. And that would be... By Dolce Gabbana Man. Okay? And that gorgeous zebra bottle. Their female version of this one was um, in the leopard uh, metal container. And then the glass bottle is kind of put inside this metal container that has a plastic container on the inside. And the it's like all the materials mixed in one. We have glass, plastic, metal. Same here. Well, plastic and metal. Oh. Take it home, baby. Take it. You know what I mean? Take the rain, Jesus. Take the wheel. Mm, the sandalwood in this one. The breezy, bergamotty, citrusy accords in the opening. The aldehydic tickle tickle. Oh, man. This thing is a dream come true. And then this continued, right? And then, like, I only have half a bottle left. Oh, my gosh. Look. See? The liquid is hitting when you lay it flat. It's like halfway through, a little bit less than, there's less than half left. So it's about 25 mil left. Uh, sorry, it's a, no, yeah, oh my gosh. It's a 50 mil bottle. Yeah, so I only have 25 mil left. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? A bit of sadness as well comes with it because, you know, it no longer exists. But boy, oh boy, Euro Italia really knew what they were doing with Dolce Gabbana back in the 90s. Like, this thing is a masterpiece. I, you know, why don't they bring it back? Probably some legal issue with Euro Italia and them. There's, there must be a reason. But this thing, maybe they can't do the same sandalwood either again. It would probably be some weird reformulation. But oh my gosh, is this thing precious. You smell it and you feel energized, but not like you're losing control. You know, sometimes when you have an energy kick, you're like oh, 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 all over the place. Not this one. This one gives you an elegant energy. This one, this one allows you to be very energized while wearing a suit and a tie. In other words, clean on the streets and filthy in the sheets type of vibes iyk yk energy guaranteed ain't nobody need no duracell batteries if you got this little baby with you if you got this horse in your trunk all that junk in that trunk let me tell you it also has the shape of a battery except it's much better so there you go guys uh, these would be my top 10 energizing perfumes or energy giving perfumes let me know your top 10 or top whatever down below or bottom whatever down below <laughs> no pun intended here never uh, love you loads thoughts and prayers down below thumb up this video if you've enjoyed it and if you wish to see more subscribe and push that notifications bell see you next time and never forget to never give up on energy love bye